tonight from Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. The 10th ranked Wildcats welcome the Kedets of VMI. Last time they were here, an up tempo squad upset Billy Gillespie's Cats in 2008. This is a different team, different tempo, different coach. And moments ago, VMI head coach Dan Earl got his squad ready for Rupp. We talk about it all the time, finishing the play, right? Finish the play. That can be blocking out, that can be walling up, that can be challenging a shot, 50-50 ball, whatever it is, you got to finish the play tonight. Everybody understand? Aggressive but smart. That's very important. Don't be sheepish out there. Go north-south, go to the rim, be aggressive, but use your mind. Don't try to finish over against 6'11 guy. Just be smart, shot, fake, pitch, whatever it is, but don't be afraid to make plays. Everybody got it? And the biggest thing, fellas, is our mindset. It's our mindset, right? Nobody came here no one in this room came here to tell people you played in front of 24,000 people, Rupp Arena, against all Americans, take a couple free Gatorades. We came here to compete and show people that we compete. Everybody understand it? And so that's the message from Dan Earl. Welcome courtside. Tom Hart alongside Andy Kennedy. It's your first time sitting here. You've been over there and you've been in that visitor's locker room a few times. What do you make of his message to his team? I love Dan Earl's message. Don't come in here and play scared. Embrace the opportunity that the University of Kentucky and Rupp Arena presents, but you have to stick to your game plan. Don't come out and get out of who you are. And VMI is totally different from it relates to how they want to play than a Kentucky team. Meanwhile, for Kentucky, their defense is vastly improved from where they were earlier this season. They allowed 118 to Duke. Everybody knows how dismal that was. Two games since, they've only allowed a 117. A lot better, doing a better job of containing the bounce. That's really what it starts with. If you allow dribble penetration, you're going to lead to unnecessary rotations. And luckily for Kentucky, they do have guys in the back that can clean it up. Got to do a better job on this action all night. The dribble handoff is something that VMI is going to employ all night long. Open floor opportunities come with good defense, and that's what Kentucky wants tonight. So the points in transition were there for the Cats last week, but it's a Kentucky team that at times has a hard time scoring the half court. That is, unless P.J. Washington gets going, which is what he did last time out. Their most experienced returning player. They are really counting on him this year as a sophomore to provide leadership as well as production. Five for seven from three early in the season. He certainly extended his game, but that's where he makes his living, in the paint eating up the offensive glass and finishing around the basket. He hit four threes in that game for John Calipari's squad in the win against North Dakota. A series that dates to 1914, renewed tonight in Rub. BMI team is in the midst of a doubleheader against Kentucky schools. University of Kentucky tonight, Kentucky Christian next. What a difference. Founded in 1839, they're in Lexington, Virginia, out of the SoCon now. Their mascot is something Andy Kennedy can relate to. Mo the kangaroo, he's got a pouch. <laughs> See if that pouch comes in handy tonight for Dan Earl's squad. That win they had in 2008 was the win in VMI's history. They're led by Travis Holmes. He had 30, Jody Meeks at 39. It's a game most Kentucky fans would like to forget. VMI controls the tip, 3-1 and one on the season, coming off of a big win against USC Upstate. Tom, they're going to try to score early, score late in the shot clock, make Kentucky sit down and guard. They're going to be very disciplined early in the clock. They may have to go through that pouch, the old hidden ball trick to get shots up early. Shot clock is at 3. Get used to this tonight. They work it inside and unable to get a clean look off. That's why it's so important for Kentucky to do what Kentucky does, and that's dominate the defensive glass because they don't want to have to guard for a minute each possession. Got to do a good job on your defensive glass. You look at the starters for Kentucky. They include E.J. Montgomery for the first time this season. No start for Reed Travis, the Stanford transfer. More on that when he enters later. Here's Tyler Hero. Kentucky showing good patience early, playing inside out, leads to an open look. Keldon Johnson for the triple. That's a good sign early time. They struggle from three. You take P.J. Washington's five for seven out of the equation, and they're shooting in the low 20s as a team. Good sign to see Kedron Johnson knock down an open look off great ball movement. Tyler Kramer puts in a three. It's a Princeton-style offense in some ways. That includes a five-man who'll come out and shoot it straight away. Well, that's the one difference. They're going to keep their bigs away from the basket, so Kentucky's going to have to extend their defense, which is unusual for bigs. 
VMI foul in the half court by Miles Lewis, sophomore out of Ashburn, Virginia. And VMI defensively will look a little bit different than Kentucky has seen this season, a matchup zone. And they're going to stay. They have not played one possession time of man-to-man -man defense all year. Matchup zone for those at home is basically you are matching to the player in your area. It's like a switching man-to-man. -man. So they'll have size advantages. Kentucky will if they'll move the ball and cut through the zone like you see them doing early this possession. Shot clock dwindling already. Touch inside, and P.J. Washington the feed for Keldon Johnson. Again, another clean look, and as a coach, you just want to control the quality of your shot. They play through the inside out. You see Bubba Parham with a quick three. You see every time that Kentucky catches it in the block, they're going to see a double team. That's part of the matchup zone. So what's best to run against a matchup zone? Your man offense or your zone offense? Well, I think they'll they'll do a little combination of both. Tyler Hero for a triple. But the one thing you cannot do is stand. You cannot stand because then they're going to just match with you. You have to have action versus zone with cutters and good ball movement. And Kentucky's done that early in this game. Bubba Parham running the point. Greg Parham is his backcourt mate. Bubba got inside and has it rejected. And then Hero took a bump. 82 feet from the bucket. That's already the second on Miles Lewis. A little, a little different than what they've seen through their first four games. Great move by their leading score, but they've got a guy at the basket uh, that is not going to give you easy looks. You heard Dan Earl talk to his team pregame. Be aggressive but smart. Bubba Parham at 5'11", trying to drive inside against 6'10", E.J. Montgomery. Not sure that's smart. Well, I, I, I don't think that... Uh, He's going to have a high rate of success with that big game plan. Here's Kelvin Johnson. E.J. Montgomery on the glass. P.J. Washington finds one. He'll just take it up and dunk it. That's the one thing VMI has no chance. If you cannot control your defensive glass, you're not going to have uh, much of a chance. Kentucky, obviously, plus 20 on the glass through their first three. That's what they do. Big athletic up front. But you got to put bodies on bodies if you're VMI to give yourself a chance. Kentucky out-rebounded North Dakota by 30. A triple for Tyler Kramer. He came in 0 of 5 from deep. He has started this game 2 for 2 from behind the arc. That's an open post motion that you're going to see all night, and Kentucky's going to have to sit down and guard because VMI is going to be very patient in their half-court sets. Another offensive board for the Cats. Unable to convert. Kellen Johnson finds it. I love E.J. Montgomery's energy early off the offensive glass. He's already got his hands on three balls. He's just got to calm down and finish. Here's Emmanuel quickly. And Kentucky... Struggling from deep here early on. Transition three thrown up. VMI has two threes from the five, but nobody else has made one. That's what we talk about scoring early, scoring late. They still have to take open four opportunities. If you're VMI, a team that shoots 43% of its field goal attempts from three, then you've got to live with that. Meanwhile, they're scoring early and often. Last time they were in this building, Austin Keenan, now an assistant coach, he was part of it. We'll flash back. It was a different era when these teams last met in 2008. Billy Gillespie was the head coach of Kentucky. He had put his Cats through a two-and-a-half-hour practice here at Rupp earlier in the day, and then VMI came out stroking. They led the nation in scoring for consecutive years, and this 2008-2009 team put 111 on the board. Jody Meeks did all he could do. He had a career high that night, 39. He would have Rupp later against Tennessee, but 39 for Meeks. He led a furious Kentucky comeback, but it wouldn't be enough. On the way to Lexington, Duggar Barcom showed his team, which included Austin Keenan, who had five threes in that game, showed his team the Gardner-Webb win against Kentucky the year before. When asked after the game what they're going to watch on the way back to Lexington, it was a simple answer. They said, Sports Center. Absolutely. Embrace the moment to Coach Earl's pre-game pre talk. Uh, take advantage of the opportunity, and they certainly did that in 2008. What were you doing in 2008? Little TV? Little TV. Like, literally, a very small TV that nobody was watching. Travis Holmes had a career high 30 in that one for VMI. Great action. That's a sophomore, Nick Richards. He's got a dunk. Great action out of the timeout. A little lift action, power to the post. Nick Richards right over the top. And now Kentucky, after a made basket, is going to extend the pressure a little. And they've gone to the bench. Not only sophomore Nick Richards, but also Reed Travis on the floor. Ashton Hagens has entered for the Kentucky Wildcats, so has Quade Green. 
Four new ones out there, and a three from three Bubba Parham, the sophomore from Snellville, Georgia. Now that, to Coach Earl's point, is playing smart. Kentucky switched the one to five dribble handoff. Parham, their leading scorer, just decided to shoot over the top of the five man, Nick Richards. Richards out to Keldon Johnson. Keldon Johnson's sneakers look like cotton candy. He's got a lot going on. Different type of game for Reed Travis. He's coming off the first bench since uh, coming off the bench for the first time since he was a freshman at Stanford. That was a game against Miami back in April of 2015. That's a Cal Ripken like streak, isn't it? 73 consecutive Set. starts. But tough to find somebody who's got a longer number than that. Anxious to see how you respond. You're talking about you know, dealing with, with, with a different set of circumstances. Jake Stevens. Freshman hits his first three. So so VMI's five men are now three for three from behind the arc. That is their formula. Play smart, late in the clock, stretch you from three. A great job out of the gates by VMI. Dan Earl's brother, Brian, look at that. Sophomore Nick Richards again. His brother, Brian's a head coach at Cornell. He played for those great Princeton teams, including the one that upset UCLA in the tournament in 96. I'm sure they converse often about offensive philosophies because they both run a lot of the same actions. Johnson to steal to Quade Green to Reed Travis. Great teamwork. Defense leading to offense, Tom. Play before, play over the top. VMI was in pretty good defensive position, but they got nobody can get up as high as Nick Richards. And then, again, great defensive possession led to fast break opportunities for the Cats. Whoa. Bubba Parham halfway to Hazard with that triple. <laughs> Bubba Parham again. They got the one to five switch. Parham just steps back, shoots it in. Just <laughs> yeah. I'm going to come to Rupp and hit threes, and VMI has a one point advantage. Here's Reed Travis for three. Trying to work on his outside game. Part of his transition coming here from Stanford. You see VMI is aggressive. You can't do that. I I, I would not. I've been in Rupp a few times as a coach, and I would say falling down is not a good formula for success because <laughs> typically it's going to lead to those things. But you can see VMI is going to be aggressive, trying to score early before Kentucky can set their D. Did you ever put that on the grease board? Hey, don't fall down. Here's the do's and don'ts. Don't fall down. I'm not sure I ever wrote it down, but I'm sure I, I, I verbalized that a few times. Yeah, you verbalized a few things. There we go again. Same. A little dribble handoff, switch. They obviously like this matchup. Nick Richards has, has stepped up a little bit with his length. I let Paul get that off. Hagan's cut it off. Out to Quade Green. Ooh, degree of difficulty, unnecessary. Keep going. You got a layup. You should drive me crazy, Tom, as a coach, as the old former coach. Kids always want to go to their counter. Counters are overrated. Just stay to your strength. Yeah. Keep going, man. How about VMI? They're going. They're playing to their strength. Bubba Parham, 35% from three in the season. He's nailed three of them tonight. I think they're showing us, Tom, that the moment is not too big. They are playing. And you can even tell just by their body language. Kids are playing loose, free. It obviously helps when you make shots early and allows VMI to settle in a little. Reed Travis turns it over. VMI trying to add to their advantage. They've hit six of nine from deep. You can see the, the ball screen occurs, a little rub, and that causes the switch. And he steps out. Steph Curry range. So what do you tell Nick Richards in terms of how far out he's got to come on that? Well, I think he figured it out. You know, Coach Calipari does a great job of putting these guys in positions to play basketball. Nick's now a sophomore. You saw it happen once, it happened twice. Third time, as far back as Parham went, Nick took up his space and didn't allow him to get off that shot. So now they've kind of figured out, hey, it's one thing for a kid to, to make an open three, but then when you're making them off the dribble from 28, 29 feet, I better take up his space. Get some blood on the floor, so. Head athletic trainer Chris Simmons will take care of it in front of the Kentucky bench. And this will give Kentucky a chance to set up full court press. Is this the counter to VMI's very patient and deliberate offense? I don't think there's any question in it. We, we've got to understand we're, we're only into the fourth game of the season. Uh, and a lot of times you don't have everything in. I'm sure Kentucky, as they get further along in the season, will build off their full court pressure. But right now, they obviously want to do it just to try to speed the game up. 
team that has the most talent typically likes to play the fastest, and I think we know who, who falls into that category tonight. So Kentucky wants to speed the game up a bit. John Calipari's team has been wildly efficient offensively, 84 points a game, and the offensive efficiency through the roof. We are. It is, this is the case of the missing blood. What do we got yeah. going on here? They finally found it on Ashton Hagens on his either on his sleeve or on his jersey, and so Hagens will get it addressed after they cleaned up the court. Yeah, now the world's a better place. I feel better about it. You? I mean, holy cow! <laughs> I know everybody's doing their job. You know, referees could never work in hospitals. Put these wow. guys in the ER, yeah, nothing wow. would get done. Zero. Yeah, we're still looking for the blood, I think. And there's a little bit more on the floor, so. Once again, Chris Simmons is turned into the floor polisher. That's you know where Chris Simmons is from? He's a Mississippi native. I'm fond of those guys. Came with Cal from Memphis. Did a fantastic job there. He's doing a fantastic job now. I'm, I'm not sure his pace of play is more to the VMI style than the Kentucky style. <laughs> but eventually we will get back to basketball. One thing Chris Simmons does not like to be is in the spotlight. Well, he just was. Outstanding job by the native Mississippian. Y'all stick together, huh? Princeton movements, a lot of ball rotations, a lot of ball screens. DHO leading to a back cut. Kentucky got to stay disciplined through the clock. Farm Walker did explain DHO quickly. DHO is a dribble handoff right there. They go back door to a push to the corner. There's Parham, third three of the half. VMI has not made a single two yet tonight, but that doesn't matter because they've made six of nine from three. And it's come from a plethora of guys from their from their point guard, their leading scorer, to their five man, and they're getting it out of their actions. Baseline drive, drift right there off a of back cut. So they're showing you the whole package as you see coming into the game. 43% of their made field goals on the year are from three-point range. So this is what they do, Tom. They've shot more threes than free throws. And it's interesting for Dan Earl's squad because he's still learning about his team. They get two key players out. Their third leading score from last year, Jordan Ratliff, out with an ACL. Austin Vereen, a senior from D.C., is out until late December, maybe January, due to a, due to a wrist ligament on his shooting hand. He's in his fourth season as the head coach at BMI. Came there from the Naval Academy prior to that an assistant at Penn State. Good player. You remember him as a player? Oh, yeah. Penn State. Could make shots a lot like his, the, the guys that he's coaching. His dad played at Rutgers. Was there with Jimmy Valvano back in the day. And his brother, the coach, as I mentioned, head coach at Cornell. You know, this the, not only offensively, they lower you to sleep with, with a lot of their their constant motion, but defensively against this matchup, you have to attack it early. You don't want to get late in the clock. Quickly on his way to the free throw line. Sarju Patel picks up his second. Manuel Quickly is a guy that not only can, can do a lot of things with his ability to dribble penetrate as we just saw, but he could be a lockdown defender. He just needs a little experience. Only the fourth game of his collegiate career. Two-time state champion at the John Carroll School of Maryland. Won the three-point contest in the McDonald's All-American game. Knocks them both down, and Kentucky is even with VMI. Miles Lewis returns. Patel takes a seat. They each have two personal fouls. Anytime dead ball, you can see Kentucky's going to extend the pressure a little bit just to see if they can get VMI sped up. Savon Bond out of Columbia, South Carolina, running the point now. Here's Parham. And he quickly got his hands on it and then took it with him. You know what? I, as a coach, I appreciate what quickly did. A lot of times, especially as a freshman, kid would have thrown the ball back in bounds under his own basket. Basketball yeah. one-on-one, never do that. He never even thought about it. He knew that, that he wasn't going to be able to save it, so he just absorbed it to allow their defense to get set. Little thing, which led to that. Oh! It's a bad idea, right? I mean, it's still like going on a going on a boat trip and you don't know how to swim. Exactly. If, if, if you don't know how to swim and you go scuba diving, it is a lot like what Emmanuel Quigley just did. Ill-advised. Uh, Ill-advised. Yeah. Made up for it and ended up being rewarded, which a lot of times in life you're not rewarded for doing the right thing. He was. 
Bubba Parham commits his first personal, and then Kentucky turns it over for the P.J. Washington travel. Fourth turnover for the Cats here early on. Keeping VMI in this game, it's not the same. We mentioned this earlier. It's not the same VMI style that they played back in 2008, 2009. That was just breakneck speed trying to lead the country in scoring as they did for consecutive years. No, it's completely different. And they've taken the air out of the building a little bit. Yeah. Obviously, they've made six threes, which is, which is you know, Coach Earl's dream plan coming into the game. But I think the, the matchup zone has got Kentucky a little stagnant in the half court. This is where they got to excel. Friday Green with a blind shot, and he'll be going to the free throw line. Garrett Gilkison with his first personal and the team's sixth. Be interesting to see how Quade Green fits into the rotation in the Kentucky backcourt. You mentioned the young guys. I mean, you're quickly starting at one guard spot. Ashton Hagens has been out there. Then there's Quade Green, who's returning as a sophomore. Quade Green played around 25 minutes a game last year. I like to I like to label him as more of a combo than a natural one or a two. He he is built to score, uh, so I think now when they have bigger guards in their backcourt with Manuel Quickly, Ashton Hagens, with Tyler Hero, he's allowed to play on ball defensively, off ball offensively. So hopefully they can get some more point production out of him, which I really think the way he is the way he's wired. Kelvin Johnson returns. Friday now nine of eleven from the free throw line. Seriously, what he got on Kelvin Johnson's shoes? You know what I, I'm not sure that was a great idea. I'm sure at, at one time it, it sounded good, like you know many of our ideas in life. <laughs> but I'm not sure. You know, life's about execution. I'm not sure how that was pulled off. Some guys, guy, uh, sometimes guys will wear mismatched shoes, right? Same style, same size. One, say one blue, one white. I don't know if those are mismatched or not. You can't tell. It's a long two. I think they're original. Let me tell you something. The dribble handoff action is really bothering Kentucky right there. They got a freshman, EJ Montgomery, involved in it. He was late. You cannot be late to the VMI shooters, especially tonight. What do you got? Cotton candy, push ups. Um. Push ups. <laughs> That's an oldie but goodie. I don't know. I, 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 if, I'm sure if Coach Calipari, if we're if we're inside the mind of Coach Cal right now, he just wants them to move faster. Right. Doesn't matter what they are. And Kelvin may have been. He he may be their their most consistent player through this early part. We've only got a small sample size, but he's been terrific. This kid is 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 very very versatile. He can really influence the game defensively, uh, and, and that's something that they may need to get a little more energy in the building tonight. Mm. Shot clock is at two. Parm picked up his dribble, has to force it. Oh! The bank almost went in, and then a foul on EJ Montgomery. And now, guess what? You got to do it all over again. Yep. Late clock, hard carom. Don't secure your defensive glass. Now you got to sit in the stance uh, for another 30 seconds. Montgomery commits his second. Reed Travis returns. But thank goodness they got the blood up. Yeah, <laughs> got that taken care of. Young man who, who started the game, Kramer with two big threes. Wow, tough shot, one on one. Player making a play. Miles Lewis, a sophomore from Ashburn, Virginia. BMI up by a deuce. And when the ball goes in the basket, obviously it's harder to get out in transition. When Kentucky gets back, VMI has set like the aggression. Really, that was set up by Reed Travis occupying space in the lane. PJ saw an open angle and took advantage of it. Slicing for Lewis left it short. Okay, so if they can get a look like that, and here's a push up that's picked off by Gilkerson. And then Kellen Johnson with the foul midcourt. He didn't agree with it. If they can do this every time, why don't they do it every time? Well, you know, again, I'm sure that that is the game plan. But sometimes, you know, kids see the game a little differently than you and I, and most definitely a little differently than the man standing up on that bench over there. Uh, so still a young team. Uh, you cannot get enamored with, oh, coach, you know, this is a little unusual, meaning the, the matchup zone of BMI. You have to be in attack mode. Cadets looking to run some clock again. And the foul inside. Kelvin Johnson once again saw it differently. That's his second. He'll take a seat. 
And John Calipari says simply, you got to make that call down there if you're going to make it down here. It's a little frustrating. Obviously, you know, tempo, VMI, uh, game execution has been perfect for, for Dan's team early. He could not be more pleased, I am sure. And then you get a little tic-tac in the lane. All of a sudden, Kelvin Johnson, the most consistent player, as I just alluded to, is now on the bench with two fouls. Good ball pressure. You could not give VMI any space. I think Kentucky has learned that. You must challenge them to beat you off the bounce. Gilkerson with the travel. Seventh turnover for VMI. But even with the turnover, VMI is now back and set in this matchup. We need ball movement and player movement. He got it back. They get Gilkerson inside. That's his second. And this should be a huge advantage with Reed Travis going against Garrett Gilkerson, who's 6'4". Yeah, I'm taking 22 in a, in a knife fight. You? Yes. Yes. He's a big, strong kid. Plays, plays strong, too. You know, Reed Travis is, is not a Nick Richards, you know, head above the rim guy. He's an angles, strength, good feet, good basketball IQ score. That's what he was his entire career at Stanford, and that's what Coach Cal is counting on him being his, his lone year as a Wildcat. Tyler Hero takes a seat. Hagen's like, quickly and green in the backcourt now. Oh, short. I almost feel like I need to pick my energy up. Is my energy too low? Well, I, 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 I don't have a reference <laughs> point for you. I'm just saying, it's, I'm just saying it's just kind of, this is the, the quietest I've ever heard, 23,000. When I was coaching, they were never this quiet. Three, Travis has four. Kentucky has a two-point lead. This is a young man, Ashton Hagens, who Coach Cal thinks is the best on-ball defender on his team. He compared him favorably to one Eric Bledsoe in his ability to change the game defensively with ball pressure. So I'm anxious to see. Oh. On cue, expert analysis against the Palau. <laughs> Are you getting paid for this game? Uh, expert analysis. Now, now, granted, he didn't say he was great off the ball. <laughs> That's a good point. There's Greg Parham's got four. We're tied at 24. Here's P.J. Washington. Goes to the left. Unnecessarily. He likes that left hand, though. I mean, that's part of his game, but I'm not sure it's necessary. Extra pass. Quickly. Extra pass. Another offensive board. It'll stay with Kentucky. Home crowd appreciates the effort if their coach isn't thrilled with the execution. VMI 24, Kentucky 24. Now the visitors escape their locker room and hit the floor at Rupp Arena. For these VMI players, they've never made this walk before today. You usually don't have to avoid the cheerleaders, but they've avoided any sort of intimidation in this building, which is a victory into and unto itself because they are tied with Kentucky. And all those names up in the Raptors, the national championships in the wins, and they're locked at 24. I think if you're Dan Earl, you have to be ecstatic at the way that your team has taken the message in the locker room, which we were fortunate enough to get, and to take it to the floor. Now, they made shots early. I think that helps you relax. I think defensively, they've done a good job. They do, they've got to do a better job off their defensive glass. Kentucky with seven big offensive rebounds, and that's the reason the game is tied. Six ties, eight lead changes. Quite a green in the corner. It was halfway home to my point. First shot defense typically doesn't beat you, but you've got to do a better job of corralling defensive rebounds. Kentucky's going to have their way with you over the course of a 40-minute game if you allow them to beat you off the offensive glass. Here's Reed Travis has it swatted away. Kentucky leads the nation in offensive rebound percentage. They pick up 51% of their misses. Tyler Kramer with the foul. That's his first personal. Reed Travis at the free throw line. Kentucky will be back at it right here on the SEC Network Friday, 7 o'clock Eastern, as they play host to Tennessee State. You can always watch on the ESPN app from anywhere. It's a stretch of seven consecutive home games for this Kentucky team. Reed Travis knocks them both down. He's got six. I think they play three in the next five days uh, prior to the Tennessee State game, which... You just did such an eloquent job of promoing. They also play Winthrop the day before Thanksgiving on a Wednesday. So they're going Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, kind of an NBA schedule over the Thanksgiving break. Yeah, did you like schedules like that? You know what? I, every game was an entity in and of itself. Uh, I do like 
getting into a rhythm where you're playing every three or four days. Uh, anytime you're in a break, holiday, Christmas break, it kind of throws you out of your routine a little bit. See if Kentucky will go on a run here. They did it about this time against North Dakota last game when they went on a 14 to nothing run. Liberal penetration. Don't let the ball stick. Keep moving the ball. Ball sticking a little bit with Quad A Green. Ball's got to keep moving. A two for Hero. Reed Travis fighting for it. Took a shot to the face. They can say that one was on the floor. And that'll be on Jake Stevens. You know, a lot of times Tyler Hero, who was incredible in their foreign tour when they went to the to Paradise Jam. Were you there? Oh uh, yeah, I happened to be there. Yeah, no, it was a I tough know. gig. That was a tough gig, man. Uh, they played really, really well against quality competition, and Tyler Hero was a guy that everybody left there thinking, man, where'd this kid come from? He then followed that up with, with playing really well in the, in the preseason. Uh, and, and he's more than just a catch and shoot guy. Kyle thinks the best part of his game is that old school mid range right there. We just showed it just a little bit short. Every day's a new day when you're a freshman in college basketball, most especially at a place like Kentucky. Did I tell you that I went scuba diving in the Bahamas? Yeah, did Seth go with you? Is he a swimmer? No, he didn't make it. He doesn't look very buoyant. <laughs> oh, he's plenty buoyant. <laughs> he got beat by Dan Dockich on the golf course. Dockich was playing barefooted. Oh, wow. That's not a surprise, believe it or not. Oh, he's an Indiana hillbilly. Kentucky's opened up a four-point lead here. We're talking about Tyler Hero and what he can be. And Rex Chapman has said, oh, a nice slip. By Kramer. Just a miscommunication right there before we get back to Rex's thoughts because we all want to know what those were. But but between Quade and Nick Richards, two of the upperclassmen, they both stayed with the ball handler. And let me open layup. Nick Richards inside. The Tyler Hero could be wildly effective if he could get to the free throw line for six attempts a game. What difference does that make for a guy like that? No question. Well, then all of a sudden it's going to create space for him to shoot it. Right now, people are playing him shot first, and you have to adjust as, as a young player. Bubba Parham will have three free throws coming his way. Quade Green can't believe it. Right here, watch both players stay with the ball handler. The five man slips wide open to the basket. And when the ball is in the middle of the floor, Tom, there is no help side. So you say, well, where's your help defense? There is no help defense when the ball is in the middle of the floor. That, that, their mishandling of the dribble handoff is what caused the problem. Parham's got three coming his way. Was six in the Silicon and scoring last year with almost 15 points a game. He was really good last time out against USC Upset. He scored 14 points without making a three. He was able to draw 10 fouls in that game. And 12 for 12 from the free throw line, is that correct? Uh, eight of nine, but yeah, whatever number you want. For some reason, I was thinking 12 for 12. I must not have uh, uploaded that game <laughs> in real time. <laughs> Wait, it's television. We can say whatever we want. I, you know, I am, I am learning that. Not nearly the, the same accountability as my last job. No, you're not going to have to meet with ADs or beat riders after the game to explain yourself. 12 points for Bubba Parham. It's a one point Kentucky lead. Move the ball. Free throw line jumper, no. I'm sure Cal, again, even if that would have went, one player got it in, took it down, shot it. That's not the recipe. Against the matchup zone. You gotta get early ball movement. Get early movement. Turn, turn, turn. Travis hangs and he'll go to the line. It's another one on Tyler Kramer. It's his second. Yeah, he's been, you know, him and Palmer have been their 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 catalyst offensively. Him picking up a second foul, anxious to see. It looks like Dan Earl's gonna have him sit the remainder of the half. 505 to go. All right. I understand that you are going to play to your routine as a coach and say hey you pick up two in the first I'm going to sit you but is this not a little bit different for VMI yeah, this setting and this opportunity I definitely think this is a little different uh, than the Southern Conference no disrespect Southern Conference is very good basketball but you know this is this is a big game for them but they're in the game it's a one possession game you got a young man who's picked up his second foul I'm not saying you're sitting for the remainder of the half but you but you let his head clear a little bit get through the under four media and then make an adjustment Speaking of the SoCon, Furman went into Villanova and beat them in overtime a couple days ago. They haven't been to the NCAA tournament since 1980. SoCon with two early wins, excuse me, Furman with two early wins against two participants in last year's Final Four. Did you know that? Yeah. I mean, I know, I mean, I know what Parham was from the free throw line in the last outing, but I know that nugget for you. You probably don't know what a Paladin is either, but I'm not going to put you on the line. I certainly couldn't spell it. 
Furman hasn't won an NCAA game since they knocked off South Carolina in 1974. Here's Claude Green. Like that possession, even though you missed it, ball got reversed. And again, you have got to put your bodies on them early. Now, I have been over there where Coach, Coach Earl is standing. And many times, Kentucky's just bigger, faster, stronger, and they're going to get those rebounds. But you have to put bodies on them early. You're certainly not going to outreach a team that uh, is physically superior. So Jake Stevens commits his second, but he is still on the floor now. 436 left in the half. P.J. Washington at the line. Tomorrow at 7 Eastern, 6 Central, it's Thinking Aloud with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. Like I said, they'll talk football. They want your participation. You can do that through social media throughout the show. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app. Um, the real AK is not really on Twitter, but you know you could tweet him and tell him what you thought about that call at the end of the Ole Miss game last night. They might talk about it. Yeah. Wow. Don't get me started there. I was sitting you, there. The beauty I, I, of where you sit now is you can comment on officiating now. You yeah, don't get a phone call. I was I was blown away with that call. You know, I was pulling for my man Matt, Matt Luke, and I was kind of blown away with that overturn. That one was halfway down, but fell out. Offensive board BMI. Reed Travis gets his hands on it. Push, push, push. This is where Kentucky wants to play. Open floor. Good call. Can't lower your shoulder. Young kids typically play too upright. I think uh, off the catch, Tyler was a little high and couldn't turn the corner. You can see here, good advancement by Quad A. Ducked that shoulder, great defensive position. A lot of times people think you have to be stationary. You necessarily don't have to be stationary. You just have to be in legal guarding position, and that's what uh, the young man from VMI was. Earned that charge. It was Miles it. Lewis who drew the charge. Kentucky just one of its last eight to allow VMI to hang in this thing. You can't get bored guarding this controlled action early. You've got to be disciplined. VMI's doing a good job of finding matchups they think they can attack off these switches. Off the turnover, Washington. Mm, that's a grown man. Followed it up. That's a grown man move right there, Tom. And a steal by Quad A Green. Reed Travis with the follow, and it goes. Relentless effort off the offensive glass. They already have double-digit offensive rebounds, and quite frankly, it's the re and quite frankly, it's the reason that now they're, they're looking for a 10-point lead. Hagen's got his hands on it. Reed Travis able to clean it up. Kentucky on an eight-nothing run, and Rupp is finally alive. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Great to see you. Great to hear your voices around the SEC. Dari mentioned that big victory for Arkansas. How about Alabama taking down Wichita State? The American is off to a, a really weird start this season. Daniel Gafford was a monster again. 27 points, 12 boards, three blocks. South Carolina, no problem with GW. Missouri and Oregon State are tied early. Minnesota and AM go after it late. What does that Arkansas win mean to the program and to the league as a whole? I think it's huge. You know, you really make your reputation in your non-league scheduling because once you get into league play, Alabama last year, for instance, Alabama goes eight and ten, and yet they're a nine seed in the NCAA tournament because of the respect that the league got top to bottom and the quality of op opponent that you're going to have night in and night out. You establish that by winning games in the non-league. Arkansas, huge, huge win today, uh, defending their home court against a very good Indiana team. Yeah, it's it's really simple to think about it. If you can have you don't have to think about it from a top 25 like an AP poll perspective, but just look at Ken Palm. If you're all in the top 40 of Ken Palm, you will never have a bad loss. That's right. A lot of quality opportunities. Look what's happened through the first couple of weeks. Vanderbilt goes on the road and beats USC in a true road contest. You get a Pac-12 scout. Then you got Auburn blew out Washington. Auburn has played lights out. Really looking forward to them next week in the Maui. Tennessee defeats Georgia Tech, an ACC opponent, LSU. Impressive out of the gate with a good win against a Memphis quality team. P.J. Washington and Reed Travis have combined to score 18 of the last 20 Kentucky points as the Cats have opened up an 11 point lead. You know what both teams are really playing to the game plan. VMI a couple of turnovers not doing a great job off their defensive glass making shots being patient offensively not allowing Kentucky to take them out of what they want to do offensively except for that one. Uh, again, my, my analytics are off the chart, aren't they? <laughs> hey, but what, what really has been impressive, Kentucky's front line, 9 for 13 to start the game with 13 offensive rebounds. Ashton Hagen's had the steal a moment ago. Now he's got a bucket. 
He's a young man with that I referenced early, Tom. Great on-ball defender, and he showed that in the last possession just by being so active on the ball. Well, he's the number one point guard in the 2019 class, but reclassified. Had originally committed to Mark Fox in Georgia. Big possession here for VMI. Game's going to get away from you. Wow! Bubba Parham from D. Bubba doesn't seem very rattled, does he? <laughs> no. He's looking like he's embracing this opportunity. All five, seven of them. He's got four threes and 15 points. Good ball movement by Kentucky. Extra. There it is. Claude Green all alone. Mm, perfect. That's a great offensive execution. Great ball movement leading to the open three. I have come to learn in my 23 years of coaching that open shots are better than contested. How long did that take you to figure out? Well, unfortunately, a little too long. Parham, leaner. You didn't mind any shot when you were playing. No, and you know, ooh, Travis. And a lot of, you know, I, I had guys that the shot selection would make coffee nervous and, and Marshall Henderson and Stephon Moody and a plethora of others. Reed Travis, I think, took a shot to the face as he was cutting down the lane. And he'll need to be tended to here. He went down in a heap. Patel committed the foul. It was his third. You think he got poked in the eye? I couldn't yeah, tell. I think so. Yeah. I mean, big guys like that just don't go down. It looks in like that man. Guy's trying to make a play on the ball. Looks like he may have poked him in the eye. Mm. Painful, painful initially. Hopefully, it's nothing too serious. Well, at least they're laughing. That's a good sign. Well, I mean, obviously, he's got a, he's got a great sense of humor. I'd like to know what he's saying. I think Reed Travis was trying to make up for the time that he wasn't on the floor for the start. <laughs> Get a little extra camera time. Here's what BMI has been able to do. Bubba Parham with a deep three. And good ball movement for the catch. This was the open three in the corner from Friday Green. Extra pass. You just love to see that as a coach. Extra pass, and it was rewarded. Catch and shoot, Quade Green. And that's what they need more of, you know, early in the season. Uh, Quade's two for seven from three, and that's a number that's going to have to improve as we move forward because you know people are going to do what they always do early in the season against Kentucky, and that's pack it in and try to make them score from the perimeter. They need to make shots, and tonight's going to be a, a good opportunity to work on just that. Reed Travis is going to come out of the game and they'll put Emmanuel quickly at the free throw line. Common foul, and when the shooter is injured, the opposing coach gets to pick the shooter. So let's see who he picks. The only difference is if it were a flagrant, right? Then yeah. you can't commit a flagrant and say, oh, now we get to pick who shoots the free throws. And yeah, there's a lot going on with the F1s and the F2s and the, a lot of Fs throwing around. Yeah. You know, you gotta do. So Reed Travis headed back to the locker room. They're going to say, hey, PJ Washington, you're at 56%. Yeah. How about you go to the line? Yeah, let's see what you do. PJ Washington is a guy, though, that's going to be an all league player for the Cats this year. So I'm sure he is looking for the opportunity, looking forward to pick up a free one. Here was the foul. Patel pokes him right in the eye. Must have been a Three Stooges fan. <laughs> Hagen's leaves. Another one coming for Washington. Syndication changes the world. It sure does. Hope Reed's okay. Just like that. Cats have taken control of the game, and it's really been the ability to keep balls alive off the offensive glass and defensively turning VMI over. Patel fading. Mm. Tough shot. You don't see that every day in the SEC. The old one, two. That's the old Turk to leave. I think that's a Dave Neal move. <laughs> Could be. It's Sunday afternoon YMCA. Good extra pass again. Love it. Inside out. 
tell Tyler Hero, and he's coming off a good game. You did it, did you not? Did you do the last game? I believe I was here, but it was a long time ago. A I mean, long that was time all the way back to Wednesday. And he played really well, made shots, and you, you would hope that he could use that. Young players, the psyche is pretty fragile. That's a look that, you know, he's going to have all year long, and I think he's going to be a very, very consistent shooter before this is all said and done. How do you get young guys, and this could even apply to Juco guys, ready mentally for the speed of this level of basketball well you know obviously the thing that, that Kentucky has a huge advantage of is they go against each other in practice but practice is one thing uh, even though I, I know their Kentucky fans come there's not going to be 23,000 there and a point that I don't think is made very much and when you're an upperclassman maybe it's not a big deal but when you're a young guy they don't get in rough arena you know they don't do yeah. shoot they just come in on game days and it is a different field than the craft center Actually, there's some folks as Hero drives and leaves it short. Some folks think the last time that Kentucky had a shoot around here at Rupp Arena was a game against VMI in 2008 when Billy Gillespie had him rolling for two and a half hours and they lost the game. EJ Montgomery showing his length and athleticism, just cleaning up off with a great block, which again leads to open floor opportunities, which is where Kentucky wants to be. Friday Green can't go under. VMI dodged the bullet there going under that ball screen. Quade just made one open in the in the corner, but it's a little more difficult off the bounce. Will SEC teams go under Quade Green on ball screens? I, I think it depends on whether the two for seven turns into four for seven. Yeah. It'll all be statistically based. Tell off the mark. VMI kept it alive. And they get it in the paint. And we'll kick it out. A rush three. <laughs> Friday Green will start to break. Here we go, two on one, two freshmen. Oh my gosh! Make it three. Where in the world did EJ Montgomery come from? Great court vision by Tyler Hero. Quade Green with a big defensive rebound initiates the break. Great vision. And you want to always reward the bigs for running. Kentucky's bigs, Washington, Travis, and Richards combined to score all 20 of the Cats' points as the score went from tied at 22 to 42-29 over a six-minute span. 24 points in the pay for Kentucky to just four for VMI. Associate head coach Kenny Payne, another Mississippi native, right there talking to E.J. Montgomery. Kenny's been with Cal a long time, does a great job uh, of obviously recruiting, but also helping him with that front court. Any other Mississippi shout outs you need to get in? Matthew Mitchell in the building, where's he? You know, I hadn't seen my man, Matt Mitchell. He's certainly worthy. Greg Parham, clock winding down. Here's Bubba Parham. Would have been fitting for that one to go. Kentucky has opened up a 14 point advantage at the half after this thing was tied at 22. All merry and bright here in the Commonwealth after a slow start. Catch 48, Kedet's 34. Let's get you to the studio. 10th ranked Kentucky leads VMI 48 to 34. A game that was tied at 22 and the Cats pulling away. So at this point, as we get ready to start the second half, Kentucky's up by 14 biggins. Tom Hart alongside Andy Kennedy. That's what they say around here. Know if you knew that Kentucky doing it though now. by crashing the glass especially offensive boards 24 points in the paint 16 second chance points that's what Kentucky does they eat off the offensive glass and they have got a number of guys that can do it bodies on bodies on bodies from Reed Travis to PJ Washington to Nick Richards to EJ Montgomery they just keep coming VMI has got to do it as best they can and try to put contact on Kentucky earlier in the possession to give themselves a chance. VMI hit six of their first nine three-point attempts, but only one of their last seven. See if that math is right. And they turned it over ten times. Reed Travis suffered an eye injury in the first half. Questionable to return. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him again. But as you said, the bigs doing their job. And a plus 16 advantage on the glass for Kentucky. I think obviously VMI has to address the rebounding issue and then 10 turnovers 
is not a, a good sign. You can't have 20 turnovers in rough. I bet there has not been many victories by an opponent with 20 or more turnovers in this building. Sh shot it well early. They've got to get back to that formula and fight their way back into this game. Last time VMI was here, they took a $75,000 check and a 111 to 103 victory against Billy Gillespie's squad in the 2008-2009 season opener. A little less than your game for you, I heard. Just a hair. Calvin Johnson's shoes are back on the floor. <laughs> he had foul trouble in the first half. There they go. If they can get it on the rim, they are typically going to keep it until they score. That's been the M.O. for the Cats tonight. And swatted away. It was Ashton Hagens that time. Parham okay. drains a three. You know what, VMI was rocking and rolling until number 25, Tyler Kremer, picks up his second and then his third. It's nice to have him back in the game for VMI. He keeps that possession alive with an offensive rebound, which led to an open three. Quickly for three. It's a good look. I'm not sure quickly shot prep was great. His feet seemed a little slow in shot prep. Great defense leading the offense. And then it's the wrong team's offense because they ended up getting the three out of it. Kentucky gets a dead ball, wants to extend pressure. Again, there's that man again. Love to see him on the ball. Manuel quickly along with Ashton Hagens are going to be really, really good. Long term on ball defenders for Big Blue. There's Reed Travis sporting the glasses now, protective glasses after suffering an eye injury late in the first half. You can see it. Look at it. Looks like me late night. <laughs> that right eye. Hey, don't call you right eye Kennedy for nothing. You can see, I mean, he wasn't bluffing. No. Uh, I mean, he he got poked in that eye. It was causing a little pain, I'm sure. It's like he got hit with a Jenga board or something. Inside, and we got a hold on uh, Miles Lewis. It's his third. You can see Kentucky's going to make a concerted effort of trying to go inside. They tried high-low in their first couple of possessions there. A little lift action to power to the post. Um, they don't want to settle. I guarantee you Cal was like, they just do not settle. Try to do what we do, pound it inside, and then need off the offensive glass. Great dribble penetration. Calvin Johnson. That was all initiated off quickly off the bounce. Got the ball in the center of the zone. Bad things are going to happen defensively if you allow that ball in the middle of the floor. Gilkerson with the change of speed finds Parham. B.J. Washington fought for it. Dribble penetration, which was which was a concern for Kentucky early in the year. Right there, they gave up a little penetration and then helped off strong side corner, which as a coach you don't want to see. Gave VMI a, a relatively clean look. Stunt and stay strong side corner. You never want to help off that shooter. Good ball movement and a ball fake. Nice look from Garrett Gilkison, his first bucket tonight. I know we got a lot going on over here in this TV aspect for all Americans watching, but I could hear Cal, I could hear Cal screaming heads. They didn't do a good job at the point of attack versus that ball screen, and then they left their feet, which led to an open three. And Diamond is going to make those shots. Higgins with the straightaway jumper. Yeah, you get a chance now where you sit here to actually observe the other coaches. Do you ever get distracted? by another coach's antics in game. You know, uh, I got distracted rather easily in this venue because things typically were not in the old Rebels favor, but uh, not really. You're so concerned and so caught up in, in your own team. You're not really looking at that other guy. So now you, you're getting a chance to appreciate. He's right in your line of sight. The many game faces of John Calipari, and he may be louder than the producer in my ear. <laughs> I, mean, I, I can I, I can hear him verbally. <laughs> Uh, across the court. He's pretty animated too. I mean, you know, Cal, I, I, he's been great to me you know, throughout my my time of knowing him. And he was very candid yesterday. I went and watched him practice. He was very candid in that you forget that you have to go back to reteaching everything over because you have so many young guys. Look at that. That's an incredible number, yep. right? Identical right records. To the it guy is. who they named this uh, arena after. If you've been watching John Calipari's practices for years, 
there is a Groundhog Day like aspect to it. But I thought it was candid in that he told me he even forgets that you have to go back there. He even owned that going into the Duke game because Duke was so was such an outstanding opportunity early in the season that they were trying to get more things in and he may have rushed the process and got away from some of the fundamental building that you have to do with a young team and it and it opened his eyes and I thought he was very candid in admitting that and getting back to the basics. Reed Travis is back on the floor playing with the glass he's got a bucket a moment ago now Kentucky a chance to run Kelton Johnson from 16. It's kind of in that in between range I don't know if he wanted to drive it or shoot it. But pace has certainly picked up to Kentucky's advantage. Another thing that Cal has discussed in the last week or so is that he also forgot the difficulties of last season. He was looking back in a glass half full based on how they finished sure. the run through the SEC tournament. And the Sweet 16. And if you would have yeah. thought, you know, early in the season, this team went 10 and 8 in league play. You know, eight losses in league play usually is, you know, three or four years for, for Big Blue. And for that team to finish as strongly as it did, as you said, with the run through the SEC tournament and then getting to the Sweet 16. That's what he was reflecting upon, not the, the grind and the battle that it takes to get there every year. Gilkerson may have dragged his pivot foot. May have. Well, I think he got distracted by Kelvin Johnson's <laughs> shoes. Those got to be distracted to the ball handler. <laughs> He's playing with popsicles on his feet. Meanwhile, Reed Travis back in the game. Great to see playing with the protective glasses. And he's got an hundred. And it's nonstop. This isn't just for everybody. No, it's certainly not. It's a little different than my daily schedule. Yours? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know what the O was in front of that first <laughs> one. O700. Like, oh, no, that's too early. My dogs have to usually go to the restroom around 730, which is a forced <laughs> Force wake up call for the man of the house. This and then uh, we kind of fall in line from there. Brought to you by TMI. <laughs> Taps goes at 23:30. That's lights out. You wouldn't make it to your favorite establishment if that was your rule. You no, know, I, I didn't take much sleep for me. Thank goodness. Good to see Reed Travis back on the floor. He looks good in the goggles too. Rattle home for Bubba Parm. He's got 21. His career high is 26. You cannot go under any action with him. You have to force him to beat you off penetration to the basket. Again, Kentucky's taking control of the game. You may lose your focus a little bit because you are playing with young perimeter players and he makes you pay. Hanging around. 13. It's about your margin of error, about 13 in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's my lucky number. It's always a margin of error with me. Reed Travis kind of talked his way back into this game. The trainers were hoping that he would wait and go see an eye specialist. He said, no, no, I only got one year playing here at Kentucky. That does not look good. Yeah, and he's come out and he's produced. The trainer gets a high five after the game for getting him back. He's been very productive in his return. But I'll let you know the trainers from Mississippi. Oh, I heard that. Did we cover that? We got plenty of time to get into more if you'd like to. Travis knocks both free throws down. What do you think of this Kentucky team big picture? You know what? You've got to remember that it is a part of the process. When I look at a team, you start to say, okay, what can they do and what can't they do? They have all of the pieces that are necessary. Now it's just a matter of gaining experience, getting used to playing together, and trusting their coach and John Calipari and his outstanding staff. That's really all it is. You've got to stay healthy, but they have all of the pieces necessary to be playing in Minneapolis uh, in April. Tyler Hero commits his second offensive foul. He looks a little out of sync to me. You know, kind of searching. He needs to relax a little bit. Much like me on the telecast. I, I, I got to relax. Would you loosen up? I mean, I'm a little tight. I, I feel I like need I could to take I, it to Rosebuds. I feel like I could. You know, really, shout out to Rosebuds. My new favorite. My new favorite establishment. You're a Rose. You know, I Nick and Paul. Big shout out to those guys. I think we're getting along. They give heavy pours. <laughs> I'm more of a KS bar kind of guy, but that's fine. I'm coachable. Right there, Kentucky tried to follow the game plan that I've been giving you all evening and chase Bubba off that handoff, a little aggressive with a reach, calls the foul. But again, that's what you have to do. You cannot give him any space because he has certainly shown worthy five big threes in Rupp Arena. 
Also for Kentucky, EJ Washington. Montgomery takes a seat. PJ Washington returns. EJ Montgomery got the start tonight. He's only produced two points in a couple of fouls. So I'm sitting over here thinking to myself, because I'm not listening to what you're saying, Tom. Thank you. Uh, and I'm thinking to myself, well, this VMI team is awfully disciplined. And then I start thinking, well, they are part of our, our <laughs> I mean, they are trained by our government. Yeah, they, they makes me feel better. Corner three is good. Have a Bubba Parham. He's got 24. Yeah, about half the campus will end up going into the military. It's not required yeah. when you go to BMI. But he said around 60% commission after their uh -huh. junior year, or before their junior year, I believe he said. Friday Green for three. The uh, ratio of basketball players is a lot lower. Will Miller, who's a junior now, he will serve once he's finished with his basketball career and graduates from BMI. Tyler Hero on the passing lane. Great anticipation. Maybe that'll get that kid going. Good on-ball defense by Quade Green and Reed Travis, two of the upperclassmen. Tyler Heroes reads that and goes gets an easy one in the open floor. 63-46, Cats. This doesn't work out. Andy Kennedy could also and always go into UFC. That might be an option. Hey, I thought about that. I've got a guy, Greg Hardy. Remember Greg Hardy? Yeah. I coached him. UFC, I'm thinking about training him. Tag team. Two sports star football and basketball at Ole Miss. Let's take a look at tonight's good hands play. Brought to you by Allstate. Tyler Hero with the takeaway and two. Great anticipation for the freshman. Again, it's great to see the ball go in the basket. It really started with the activity level, the good hands of Quade Green getting extended on the deflection. How'd that work out with Greg Hardy playing both football and basketball? Hey, not so well, but I'll tell you what, it was quite an experience. Uh, he, he played for us one year. Uh, and then he, he obviously dominant football player and now you know he is doing the UFC thing you didn't know that I didn't know that I thought Joe Tess would keep you up on those things <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, uh, he's I, more of a pugilist kind of guy I tell you a bad stat is when when the home team i.e. Kentucky in this case in front of 20,207 have as many offensive rebounds if you have team rebounds that's the reason that they're up by 17, despite VMI shooting 50% from three, having made 11 to this point in the game. You think college basketball is going to go the way to the NBA where we see the three-point rate just go through the roof? I think so, and I think next year, you know, this is a non-rules year, meaning there, there cannot be, there can be different emphasis, but no rule changes. Next year is a rule change year, great running of the floor by Big Reed Travis and an unselfish play by Tyler Hero. But next year, I do think that they're talking about extending uh, the three-point line. They're talking about, you know, going to quarters, a lot of different things to change the game. I, I think some, some modest, subtle changes would be healthy. This is an unbelievable performance by Bubba Parham. Preseason all-conference selection in the SoCon. He now has a career-high 27 points. Man, he makes it look easy, easy, doesn't he? He does. And he's only 5'11". You know, I've had some good small guards, and I've had a few of them come in here and play pretty well, but he is putting on a, a quite a show. Reed Travis had a knocked away from behind. Reverse layup. That was fancy. Manufacturing points. VMI's got to do a little bit more of that. It really started with just active hands in the post. Illegal screen. Reed Travis with back-to-back -back turnovers. Yeah, that's an area of focus, the illegal screen. The lead is two touchdowns for the Cats. Andy Kennedy's dance moves, full display with the youngins. Tennessee State will be here to take on the Cats Friday at 7 o'clock Eastern right here on the SEC Network. You can watch the game on the ESPN app from anywhere. That's more like it. That first group kind of looked like you and I, the dynamic duo. <laughs> I was obviously the one with the all-star on his jersey. <laughs> Goes without saying. Uh, Bubba Parham's looking like an all-star tonight. He's got a career-high 27. Seven for 11 from three. He's given it to him however he wants. Wow, Drew Rain with that one. I gave him a little too much credit. He actually has 24, but he's nearing his career high. Yeah, numbers. Who cares? Yeah, it'll have to be accurate. You know, I was thinking about the game that Elson Turner had here for AM a few years ago, back in 2013. He had 6 to 10 from deep. He had 40 in that one. 
David Robinson has the all-time scoring record against Kentucky in Rupp with 45 back in 1987. Now, David Robinson and Elson Turner were guys you could expect big games from. Um, nothing against Bubba Parm, but this guy's 5'11". I mean, this is out of character for him. He's having an outstanding game right there. Shows you more than just the seven threes. Great penetrate to pitch. Again, Kentucky's helping a little too much off strong side corner. VMI makes some pay with that. Gilkis in with his second three. Move that ball, move that ball, get it to the TJ in that high post, and good things will happen for you. Montgomery trying to get position down low, gets whistled for the foul. That's the third on EJ Montgomery. You can see Cal's going to make a change to one of his guards. Ball sticking a little bit. You got to get the ball moving, and then there was very little player movement on the perimeter. That matchup zone is just going to stay matched up unless you can get some cuts through the middle of it. Sophomore Nick Richards returns, replacing EJ Montgomery. Mm. Tyler Hero playing aggressive. Rex Chapman had a pretty good scouting report on him, didn't he? He did. He did. Uh, he's got a lot of Rex Chapman-like qualities. Big guard, strong, athletic, can shoot it. Good basketball IQ. He broke out a retro Rex jersey during the dunk contest. Is it the blue-white game? Were you here no, I think it was uh, Big Blue Madness. BMI's on an 8-0 run right now. They've closed it within 11. Freshman with a with a challenge. Uh, and then you're quickly on arm. They got the switch they wanted. Oh man, you can't have that. Oh my goodness. Dallas not going to be happy with that. Straight line drive given up by PJ PJ Washington, and you look around and wonder where the help was. Well, one of the biggest reasons is Nick Richards had switched onto the perimeter. And he was not there to guard the basket. Tyler Hero off the mark with his three. Nick Richards lost his footing, and they'll get a foul. On Jake Stevens. 10 0 VMI run. VMI has made four in a row. They've gotten high quality looks. That is a high quality look. Pretty high quality look. Pretty high quality look right there. But again, the reason that, that one of those big shot blockers wasn't there is because of the ball screening action, which took Nick Richards away from the basket early in the possession. Kentucky hasn't scored for more than two minutes. Good on ball screen, clean look. He's going to make that. That was really all started by a great on ball screen by Big Reed Travis. He's a load to get around. They went under. Quade Green made him pay from about 17 feet. Parm on Richards, and he got a bump on the edge. Nick Richards commits his first. He's been a handful off that ball screen, hasn't he? He's a fun player to watch because he plays low to the ground. Typically, low man wins off dribble penetration. And Bubba Palm has been terrific with his ball handling skills early. Different body type, but it kind of reminds me of your old guy, Stephon Moody. Yeah, a little bit. A little different hair. Doesn't quite have the, the flavor of my man Moody. Uh, and, and not quite as powerfully built. But Stephon Moody also had a, a career game in Rupp Arena many moons ago. Kentucky's lead is 11. Head coach Dan Earl drawing it up on the Kentucky sideline. John Calipari trying to figure out exactly where this Kentucky team is right now early in the season, where they want to be. They're in the midst of seven straight games here in their home court at Rupp Arena. How do you, how do you react to a game like this if you're John Calipari? And I'm talking strictly in-game versus post-game where you might be a little frustrated. Well, here's where you are. You're sitting here with an 11-point lead. VMI has played well. You've had some certain elements of your game that you're really pleased with, most especially off your offensive glass. And I think your ball movement has been exceptional. You haven't finished that with made shots as often as I'm sure you would like. But you're up 19 three minutes ago. Yeah. And you and a young team, you, you think, oh, we're better, and we're going to put this game away. And you, you take your foot off the accelerator, and the next thing you know, VMI hits a couple of shots, and they got a chance to get this thing back in single digits. Wow. As we speak. It's your boy Patel with another high-difficulty shot. I got a dear friend, Chan Patel, another Mississippi man from Oxford. Wow, that doesn't stop. It's like it you never stops. Game. It never stops. And you know what's crazy is this kid's game's a lot like Chan's. Personal. 
Stevens passed up the three. Keep moving the ball. Be disciplined offensively again. Credit to Dan's team. A pretty good pass. Hard to hold on to for the big fella. When you throw it beneath a big's knees, typically it's a tough grab for him. Unlike my man A.J. Brown last night. I still can't get over that. <laughs> I mean, can, we, can we go back there, Tom? Holy cow, Tom. Did you have, I mean, did you have an opinion on that? No, I'm not allowed opinions with my broadcast crew. <laughs> we'll, uh, we're going to be in Athens, by the way. Georgia Tech and Georgia new oh, wow. on Saturday on the SEC Network. Get that in. Georgia Tech won again this weekend. Trying to spoil for every smart season. Here's Quade Green. Ball has stayed on that side of the floor. Reed Travis but found again. it, lost it, and it's put back up and in by P.J. Washington. P.J. Washington kind of dribbled himself into a bad angle off the initial shot. Reed Travis pursues balls, kept it alive. P.J. now has a chance for the and one. See how he got under the basket? He kind of dribbled himself into a bad angle. Balls everywhere. Washington Typically, the better players get those loose balls. I've learned that. Even when my young daughters are playing soccer, even in, in six-year-old soccer, yeah. you've seen a lot of that? Usually the best girls get to the ball. I've, I've seen that, that that travels. From girls soccer to some soccer leagues, they just college move basketball. Pack. They just move in packs, though. PJ Washington's got 14. The lead is 12. It was time to give it up when she got more excited about snack than the actual game. So we said it's time to move on to other interests. Well, you can get orange slices anywhere, and Dad doesn't have to get up as early for it. That's right. Big possession here, late in the clock, late in the clock. There it is, there it is. Skip pass, Parm ended up on the bench. Five on the shot clock, Parm wants it back. And an air ball from Kramer. Great defensive possession by the catch. Now let's see if they can cash in on the other end. Turn the ball. Good ball movement, angle score, there he is. Great pass by P.J. Washington. You know, we were talking earlier that if he can continue to develop on the perimeter with his skills, his passing ability, his ability to make shots, he's five for seven on the year from three. We know he's a terrific rebounder, and we know he is a good defender, whether it be inside or out, then they could play a much bigger lineup and stretch him to the three at times. And this is the time of year where a coach can learn more about rotation. We have yeah, exactly in the way in which you can play. Down 12, BMI has 26 of their 60 from Bubba Parra. Parham just lets it fly. Oh, oh wow. wow. 29 now for the sophomore from Snellville. Wow. That is the Steph Curry influence, though. You know, Curry does that night in and night out, and everybody thinks they can beat Curry. Well, it looks like Bubba Parham is living that dream tonight. P.J. Washington inside on the other side. I bet you 80%, I should know this because it's my job, but I, I think about 80% of Kentucky shots in the second half have come through the paint. Obviously, that was a halftime eater. A pound that blue area and take advantage of our size and strength at the rim. They've certainly done that. We just got to get a couple of stops. VMI has done a great job of, of moving the ball. And it's usually ending with a bubble palm three as he's got eight on the evening. Reed Travis commits the foul on the other side. He got a bucket on a beautiful feed from P.J. Washington. Cats flexing their muscles, but VMI threatening. Kentucky leads VMI 74-63. The Keenets, Bubba Parham, sophomore out of Snellville, Georgia. Brookwood High School was a SoCon freshman of the year last year. He is showing why tonight. He's giving you the whole package, isn't he? From Snellville, Georgia. So you knew he grew up following the SEC in some form or fashion. So he's certainly taking advantage of his opportunity on the big stage. That one from deep. Halfway to Hazard, some rainmakers coming from Bubba Parm. You've coached a lot of great scores. Marshall Henderson was one of them. A Stephon lot of Moody. Stephon Moody. How do you get a guy like this open 
at this stage in the game when everybody in the building knows that the offense is going through. Well, the one advantage is he is the primary ball handler, so he is going to have the ball. Typically, if it's a Marshall Henderson, for instance, you may try to deny him a touch, double him off some screening action, but when the guy is scoring the way he's doing it, off the bounce, off penetration, he is the primary ball handler, and it's what VMI does for their team to be successful, it makes it a little bit more challenging. You just cannot give him space. Everything he does has to be penetrating to the basket. Tyler Kramer knocks down both free throws. Dragon Fall is going to enter the game for the first time. They'll get a breather for Kramer. That'd be a defensive substitution for VMI because Fall, the 6'8 sophomore, hasn't played all night. And he's being out muscled in the paint already by Reed Travis. As we talked about, it was at 19 about six and a half minutes ago. Now it's down to nine. Big possession here for VMI. And then they got to clean it up, finish the possession by cleaning it up off the defensive glass. Quickly dribble, gets fouled. Dribble penetration. Dribble penetration kills you. Uh, I like to see that out of the young freshman quickly not settling on the perimeter Kentucky only four for 13 from behind the arc tonight So you want to put pressure on the basket in a big possession late in the game good job by the freshman now He's got to cash in Tomorrow 7 Eastern 6 Central thinking out loud with Greg McElroy Marcus Spears He'll talk football. They'll be talking about a lot of great games in the SEC yesterday including Drew Locke in Missouri with a big win on the road in Neyland Stadium against Tennessee. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app. My man Jordan Rogers ran the T-shirt cannon last night at Nash in Nashville. They might how'd that work out? That. I mean, it worked. Nobody nobody lost an eye. Mm. Folks got free T-shirts. Nobody had to read Travis Rex specs after. No, I was thinking maybe you should have loaded it with roses and shot those into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Parham, Greg will handle the ball handling duties and push Bubba down, see how they get to get him the ball now. Yeah, to your point, look what they're going to do. They're going to run him off a stagger into a handoff and then set a ball screen. A lot of things going on, and now you've got, you know, a big in P.J. Washington. He creates a little space. Oh, wow! He still <laughs> oh. got it off. Oh, what a night for this kid. 32. That's a hard shot, I would say. You? Yeah, high degree of difficulty. Pretty incredible. But they did a lot of things to get in that angle, and he, he cashed it in. E.J. Washington on the other side. I don't know if there's enough time to trade threes for twos, but that's kind of what it's turned into over the last 10 minutes. You know, and that's, yeah, they, they got my man Patel down on that block, and, and P.J. Washington is just, you know, overpowered him with size right there. Here we go again. Arm got free. He right loves that there. little step back, doesn't he? The entire there building is feeling. There it is. I don't know if there is a better fan base to have a career game against because there. they will show, as long as their cats win, they will show great appreciation. No for question, like and will remember him forever. This is a difficult shot. He loves this right to left step back. Rainbow bottom. EJ Montgomery at the free throw line. He just got to hope his DVR is working. It'll be up on the app. Mr. Mr. Uh, Mrs. Parham, you can watch this one for a while. Tom, we got a 10 point game. You paying attention? Not really. It's yeah. shocking to me because Kentucky's scoring at ease on this side of the floor, right? Yeah. If they I, pound it inside. It's twos, or twos to threes. I don't know you went to high school, but typically threes overcome twos long term. You know, so I've been told. <laughs> I was promised you weren't going to make fun of my lack of education. <laughs> I don't know if this partnership's going to work out. Bubba Parm, middle of the court. Yeah. Waiting for a touch. Yeah, no help, no help, no help. Don't let him get the ball. Good. Make him go to the back door. That's what you want to do. Now we're going to get a naked pick and pop here. The throwback. Nope. Good finish. Patel goes sprawling across the ground. He's got a half dozen slow to his feet numbers for the Cats. A tough finish. I like it. Ball move versus the zone. Again, Kentucky's playing over the top. Patel with the rebound. It's a nine-point game. 
Transition, set up three, Gilkison's got it. Wow. It's a six point game. VMI has made five of its last six shots. Is that their 16th three pointer? 16 threes in 29 attempts for the Kedets. Great drive here. Good finish over the shot blocker, DJ Montgomery. And then they get a stop. Open three in transition. That's what they do. People think Princeton style offense is old school, but in many ways what VMI is doing tonight is new school. Threes and easy twos when they can get them. Score early, score late is the reference. If you want an opportunity when you have a broken floor, if you can get a defensive stop, if you can get a turnover and get out in transition, you take advantage of numbers in the open floor. Otherwise, if you're VMI, you want to make sure Kentucky has to guard multiple ball reversals that lead to either layups out of an open post or they lead to open threes. And when they're making them to the point that VMI is tonight, most especially our man number three, Bubba Parham, who has had some incredible one-on-one -on -one individual play, guess what? You got a game. Only thing that could stop Bubba Parham is his uh, shoe size. Apparently that last one has been changed to a two instead of a three. Hmm. I, that had to be the one off the catch, right? Because he's been yeah. shooting them from 30. That had, had to be uh, off the transition. Oh, pardon me. That wasn't his. That was Gilkison's. It was changed to a two. Good inside-out action. I like the action out of a timeout. You know, Kentucky's always going to run good action out of a timeout. Cal, I'm sure, said he wanted the ball to go from A to B to C, and it ends up with two free throw opportunities. And now the truck is telling us that the officials will take a look at that at the under four timeout. Which will be the next opportunity, unless there's a timeout before then, a team timeout to double check that last three for BMI. What was the call on the floor? I, evidently it was a two because they took the point off. So it must have been a two, and then they'll go back and give them the extra point. Yeah, so it must have been entered wrong in the scoreboard. Right? Gotcha. Gotcha. So Emmanuel quickly to the free throw line. These replays have gotten me frustrated in the last 24 hours. <laughs> I think they have. Quickly's got another one coming. It's an eight point lead for Kentucky. Remember the last time BMI was here was in the 2008-2009 season. They got paid $75,000 for that game. They won 111 to 103. Despite Jody Meeks having a career high 39. Travis Holmes is the star that night for VMI. He had a career high 30. Two big free throws right there. Now if you're Kentucky, you got to get some stops. If you can if you can string together a couple of stops, get out in the open floor, then you can milk this one home, but a couple of big defensive possessions here. Greg Parham looking for Bubba Parham, number three. Bubba coming off of a curl near side. Here's Patel. So you might be in discipline late in the clock now. This is when you got to lock into your man. Finish it by securing a rebound. Shot clock's at one. Could Patel's got to it off. Great defensive possession. Good offensive possession out of the timeout. Follow it up with a good defensive possession. Now get some ball reversal. And then play through the inside. Reed Travis has had a very quiet 20 points, but he's been a man amongst boys block to block. AK, how about that last possession, though? Bubba Parham didn't touch it. He was locked up by Amanda Quickly. Yeah, obviously they were trying to deny him a touch, as you see right here. He's picking him up full court. Uh, and not allow him to touch the ball. It's hard for you to score if you don't touch it. Deep thoughts by Andy Kennedy. I am captain obvious for my day job. Here's a touch, and there's a double. Good double, good double. Make somebody else make a play. True freshman at the top, extra pass. Corner three from the other Parham skips off. Again, two big defensive possessions for a big blue. You get a bucket here, you get it back to 13. Makes life a little more difficult for VMI. Catch dominating on the glass, plus 22. Love the action. Short corner is going to lead to an at-the-basket opportunity. Jake Stevens has just fouled out to his dismay. We'll take a look back to last time VMI was in this building. Let's take you back to November of 2008, the last time the Kedets were in this building. Billy Gillespie was the head coach of Kentucky. Jody Meeks was their star, but VMI cared nothing for that. They were the nation's leading scoring team in back-to-back -back seasons. Travis Holmes had a career-high 30. They tied a rough record at the time with 14 threes. 
Jody Meeks went for 39, but it wasn't enough. This is a VMI team that at the time led by 23. Kentucky fought back to take the lead, but the Cadets closed them out. Their buses would pull into the barracks at 5.30 in the morning after the big win, but they're okay with the lack of sleep. They had to prepare, by the way, to play Virginia in the very next game. This is the ninth meeting that started in 1914. And VMI upset-minded again tonight. And when you have one of those big games, it takes a superstar, right? It takes one guy to play out of his mind, if not a couple. And that's been Bubba Parham tonight. We certainly have to get career efforts out of multiple people to have a chance to pull off such a feat as that. But those are the things that you'll remember for the rest of your life. That's the beauty of sport, isn't it, Tom? Mm-hmm. Reed Travis with another one coming from the free throw line. He wheeled himself back into this game after taking a finger to the eye. 22 and 6. Pretty good call on his part. Not bad. Meanwhile, P.J. Washington in the front court. First double-double this season. He's got 18 and 16. Greg Parham split the double. Corner three. No! No, no, no! You've got to be kidding! Tenth three. America. That's Bubba Parham. He's one off the Rupp Arena record for an opposing player. That was 11 by Corey Allman of Sam Houston State in 2009. I don't even know how he got that one off. I didn't even see him over there. Quickly has it stripped. It'll be VMI basketball. I thought the bus driver shot that. And then I, <laughs> and then I see him coming out of the, the scrum. I mean, how did he even see that? Emmanuel Quickly's all over him. The bus driver. <laughs> yeah. Look at that good-looking guy. What is going on? Look at that. Hey, that guy took my ticket at the movie theater last night. When you make 10 threes, I got to go to the readers to verify. <laughs> Kramer, swing pass. Oh, they had an open one if they wanted it. One more. Greg oh. Parham. <laughs> got it. Greg said, hey, he's not the only Parham that can shoot it. What a show they have put on. It is down to six. What a show. John Calipari is not as enthusiastic about this one as you and I are. No, I could I could imagine I have been on that 138 to go six point game tonight at 10 Eastern 9 Central after Arizona State Arkansas women's basketball the SEC now team will recap all the hoops games and talk more about the latest football news around the conference no one covers the SEC like we do you can also stream it see it streaming live on the ESPN app VMI has hit 18 threes Wow in 32 attempts I wonder what the rook record is we'll how about that for alliteration the rough record for visiting teams three-pointers made vmi previously set the record when they hit 14 in 2008 game it has been updated we are efforting we'll, we'll get it for you uh, we have right our best out. people working out sam houston state with 18 of them oh we're on the tie 2009 so here we go well, i hope we don't end on a tie nobody likes ties. not in the ties I wish we didn't have to wear them. Yeah. 18 of 32. So overrated for time. Big offensive possession here. I would make sure that ball got to the paint, and I guarantee you, you will see that out of Kentucky. Or not. Open three. Great extra pass by the freshman. Quad A Green steps in. Great sign. They're going to need him to make big shots all year. That was a big one. That was my big question. Who on this Kentucky team wants to take the big shot? He didn't hesitate. I like that as an upperclassman. Bubba Parham's got the ball in his hands, which means he's always a threat to shoot. He finds Greg Parham for a fadeaway three. Offensive board. Good ball movement. P.J. Washington finds it. How about the way the Bubba Parm's getting his teammates involved with all of the defensive attention coming to him? This kid has put this kid has been an incredible player tonight. Hats off to him. Memorable night. This is something he, he'll be able to, to have forever. Despite our commentary, maybe he'll just mute us out. But he should. What a what a performance he's put on. Because not only is he is he scored, what is he sitting on? 35? He's got 35, 10 threes, and we've already seen the NCAA record for threes match twice this past week. 15 threes by a single player, two different events, and now we got a guy going for 10 here at Rupp. The, the game of basketball has shifted. No question. And you know, this kid, he's not forcing the action. He's taking what the game gives him. Now he's making very difficult shots, but he has done it consistently, which makes me think that this is something that he does 
Uh, it doesn't look like he's forcing action, trying to, to do something to have to inflate his own numbers. He's, he's playing within the game. He, he's been terrific in his four game. And he's, he's, uh, he's led a very valiant VMI effort. Ashton Hagen's at the free throw line. And the other thing about the two guys who tied the record this week, it hadn't been matched in like 20 years, and we got two guys doing it in one week. Is they both did it against subdivision one competition? Yeah. This is coming against the 10th ranked Kentucky Wildcats in front of 20,000 people, uh, which is probably more than he'll play in the whole first month of the season, minus this game. Corner three, Kramer. Penetration led to it. That's the record. Most threes by an opponent in Rupp Arena history with that, the 19th made three today. It's a seven point game, 37 and a half seconds left. What does Dan Earl want to draw up from a defensive standpoint? This is what happened moments ago, but let's think about what is next for VMI. They just go straight to fouling here. Yeah, you know, and, and Kentucky has not been great, even though they have gotten there a lot, they have not been great lately from the free throw line. Early in the game, you know, they were shooting it at about 84, 85 percent. They're already in the double bonus. You're just trying to extend the game. And again, back to my math analogy, which hopefully you'll take to heart and hold on. Let me get, get, my, little, get, let me get, get my abacus. Okay, get, go. Get, get a little Rosetta Stone maybe for the drive home. Threes do count more than twos long term. So that, that's really the only thing that they can do is foul, extend the game. Hopefully Kentucky will miss a few, which again has not been the case other than the last couple of possessions, and then try to knock down more threes. VMI got a little extra time using their last time out. Anthony Jordan and his crew wanted to confirm that that was a three, and it was. So the deficit is, deficit is seven for VMI. Right here, obviously, it's going to be full court pressure. My guess would be one hard trap and then lead to a foul. You've got two freshmen that are going to be handling the ball because the sophomore, Quade Green, is inbounding it. So you're going to probably have a freshman on the line to try to ice it. Right here will come the foul after he gets it out of this first trap will be my guest. Here it comes. The towel gets to him. Quade Green had a good four game. Huge three, and he's made five for ten, three for five, made his only two free throws. Very efficient. For the sophomore. Great showing by Dan Earl's squad. Kentucky shooting its 32nd free throw of the night. VMI's attempted five. 19 threes. What do you think Pat Bradley's doing in studio watching? Salivating. Push ups, jumping jacks. I mean, what do we got going on? I mean, 19 threes? Pat Bradley's wondering if he's got a year left that he can go play for Dan Earl. Yeah, no doubt. Pat Bradley. He's got to be bouncing all over the set. Watching this ball go in the basket. Easy, easy, good. Green's got 17. Great game for him. He only had six last time out. More time for Bubba Park. There it goes. From the logo. Hesitation inside. Back out to Greg Parham. <laughs> That'll do it. Interesting to see if they'll foul. So Dan Earl's brother, Brian, was on a fantastic Princeton team that upset UCLA in the NCAA tournament with the back cut at the buzzer. And it seemed like Dan Earl, who played at Penn State, was going to have an upset within reach here on the road against a 10th ranked team in the country. He's got to be, you know, he was kind enough to let our excellent camera crew behind the scenes to start the game. and. To a man, I think VMI has tried to execute the game plan. They stayed within character. The stage was not too big. And again, a, a valiant showing by VMI, something that they can build on moving forward and, and hopefully give them a lot of confidence as they move on in their season. Well, their next opponent is also a Kentucky team, but it's Kentucky Christian, the Kentucky Christian Knights at the NAI level. So uh, they might want to watch tape on this guy. Again, good decision for a guy that's had so many, really had forced action. That'll do it. So Kentucky with a 10-point victory over VMI. John Calipari's team avoids the upset. Time to get you to Fayetteville for Arizona State at Arkansas women's basketball.